Hey everybody, I told you that I would be back with a uh, video to update you on my progress after taking a hiatus from WGU. I'm going to take these off just because there is a huge glare on my screen uh, or on my glasses. This is going to be a uh, quick video only because I'm currently studying for my C777 uh, exam, uh, which if you don't know or haven't taken it yet, it is the Web Development Applications course. Now, the class that I just finished is User Experience Design, which is C856. Now, User Experience Design um, was easy if you have experience designing or developing websites. Um, it's not a very difficult course if you have some sort of knowledge prior to taking it on how to build websites properly. And uh, by doing that, by doing so, I mean, not even properly, I, I guess I would say even if you have experience designing in Wix, for example, you're going to be able to create a prototype, which is the first task of, to pass the class. So instead of an assessment, you have, pro, uh, two, you have a project. Uh, your first project is to create a prototype. Uh, you have to create an outline. Uh, you have to, of, of the work that you're going to do over a given amount of time, you have to create a user persona of the types of people that may be visiting. Uh, Taniti is what they call it. You're cr basically creating a website for an island nation um, and tourism. So you have to give them specific information and all of that, which is all provided to you. Um, the next step after that is to, once you have that document prepared, is you're going to create your prototype based off of the information in your in your document. So you'll have, you know, your time frame, your uh, user uh, persona profiles, uh, your wireframe, and five usability tasks. Now, uh, just a quick tip on the usability tasks. Do not put them in the form of questions. Make them objective. If you put them in the form of questions, you may end up having to redo that portion and then resubmit your uh, your task one. So as long as you can follow those instructions and create a prototype that resembles your wireframe, then you should be able to pass task one. The second task is once you submit task one, you're going to have three of your peers review your prototype and give you feedback on your five usability tasks. And then you yourself are also going to review three of your other peers' prototypes and give them feedback on their usability tasks. Once you receive your feedback, you are going to use a template that they provide you um, and you're going to list, you know, the three peers who reviewed your prototype with links to their Panopto video review. Uh, if you don't know what Panopto is, it's just a software that films you and your screen at the same time so they can see what you're doing. Um, so you'll have to copy and paste in the names of the people who reviewed your prototype and their Panopto link. There's three of them. And then you're going to have to do the same thing for the three videos that you went ahead and reviewed for yourself, uh, or reviewed yourself. After all of that, uh, there's just a few extra things you have to do, uh, which is take into consideration the feedback from each person who reviewed your prototype, and then express individually how that is, um, how you can take their feedback into consideration and whether it's actionable, which means you can change it uh, and take their feedback, or if it's not actionable, which means it's not something that you can do. Um, <clears throat> pretty much everything is going to be actionable. The mistake I made is that on the rubric for how you're graded, it says to summarize the feedback that was given and then tell them how you're going to fix it and whether or not it was actionable. So what I did was I just put all the feedback together and then wrote a summary uh, stating, you know, what the issues were, how they were, how I could fix them, and whether or not they were actionable. Um, when I did that, I received it back and had to resubmit it because they wanted me 
to go through the five usability tasks for each individual person who reviewed my prototype and put uh, an answer in each for each of my usability tasks, answer what the feedback was from that particular person, how I could fix it, and whether it was actionable or not. Even though, and that that was five, so that's five usability tasks, three people, so that's 15 times that you have to do that. What I, that's really frustrating, by the way, because my feedback, I, I design websites at work, so I know how to do this. That's the other thing. If you're used to designing websites in WordPress, this may, this may irk you a little bit, because it's not, the way that they were showing me how to create a website is not how I would create a professional website, but whatever. Uh, we're playing their game, so we've got we've to stand by it. Um, most of the feedback responses that I had to give were exactly the same thing over and over again, because my feedback was almost all, all positive, and there were really only three or four instances that uh, were different, you know, that required a different response. So do yourself a favor line up your 15 responses in the beginning so that you don't have to resubmit. Uh, one other thing, for task one, to create your prototype website, they give you a software and they tell you to, to, create, your, to create your prototype using the software that WGU gives you access to. My problem was that their current subscription level on this software only allows a certain amount of students to utilize it to create their prototype before no one else is allowed to use it. And then you have to go and find your own uh, software to create a website with, or to create your prototype with. I used a software called MobiRise. It's M-O-B as in Brad, I-R-I-S-E, MobiRise. The problem with that, which I ended up getting around, is that for some reason, after you, it's because they're trying to get you to upgrade, you know, from the free version to a subscription version. Once my prototype was finished and turned in, I noticed that people were not able to click the links in my main menu uh, to navigate to different pages on my prototype. They were, however, able to use the links in the footer. So... I had to contact assessment services and say, hey, look, you guys told me to use this software. It didn't work. Okay, so I had to find my own software, created my prototype, showed it to my professor who encouraged me to resubmit it because the first time, you know, it led it led the evaluator up, up all the links in the header led the evaluator to a, uh, a paywall, you know, an ad to upgrade this, this, this service. So I told them, look, if you right-click on the links in the top and open in a new page, they work fine. The footer links work fine. And I'm not going to pay $150 for uh, an upgrade to this free software when I should have been able to use the software that you provided to me but wasn't able to because you didn't upgrade your subscription to allow for more people to utilize it. They uh, leveled up my request or my ticket to you know, a supervisor, and they came back and said, okay, you actually did meet all the requirements, and they passed me. So those are just a few tips. Uh, if you don't know anything about websites or how to make them, or even if you just know just a little bit, I would recommend that you go through the course material. Now, I did find a pretty good explanation on Reddit on how to do this, which I'm going to link down in the uh, description. So you can check that out. It's still a little confusing, um, but they're not. there's a lot of guessing involved in how they want you to do this. So if you need help, definitely reach out to your course instructor. Use the link that I'm going to provide down below and look at that Reddit overview. And you can also comment on this video and I will, with questions, and I will do my best to help you. If I don't know the answer, I'll tell you I don't know. Um, but it looks like everything is, everybody is different because when I finally got in to task two to evaluate some of my peers' prototypes, I saw people in there with links that just didn't even work. It would go to a 404 error and I remember thinking, God, that sucks because this person made a prototype and got all the way through task one, and now 
nobody can evaluate their prototype or review their prototype because none of us can open it. It leads to an, an error page. Um, one other thing, your peer reviews for your prototype can take some time to get. You have to get three of them. And the best way to do that is to go into the course chatter section and tell people, here's my name, here's the number that I am on the list in the Panopto da or in the, in the dashboard. You'll know what I'm talking about. Find yourself in the list, find what number you are, and you can tell people, here's my name, here's my number in the list, I need another review, I'll exchange one review from you for one review from me. Uh, that worked out pretty well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, however, it does take a little while to get those reviews for your, uh, those peer reviews for your prototype. So the earlier you turn it in, the better. Uh, but I just passed that. I'm about to take my exam for user experience design, or I mean not user experience design, for uh, C77, which is uh, web development applications. It's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, I am going to, whenever I finish this course, I'll post another video specifically about that. But watch that Reddit, or look at that Reddit overview, and if you do have some experience designing websites, um, this will be pretty quick for you. You can probably go ahead and just skip all the course material, look at what's required for task one and two, and just get started. Uh, between this video and the Reddit overview, and you know the information that they're gonna provide you on how to accomplish task one and two, if you have experience building websites, you're not gonna have a problem. Um, this course can be finished in as little as two or three weeks, and a lot of that is just waiting on other people to give you reviews, um, or you having to make adjustments because some evaluator somewhere wanted to be nitpicky about how you do how you did things. Uh, but if you think that you satisfied everything and an evaluator still tries to give you some crap about it, contact assessment services and tell them. Because I even showed my professor after the first the first task one was kicked back to me and I had to redo it. I explained, I said, look, you guys told me to use this software. It wouldn't allow me to use it. I had to find my own. It works fine for me. I'm not going to pay $150 to upgrade this free software, and I'm not going to spend another week or two creating a whole new prototype on some other form of software just because the initial software you told me to use doesn't work. You'll probably get away with it. So if you have any questions, leave me a comment. I'll do my best to help you out, but uh, definitely check out that overview and just look at the uh, the requirements. Go straight to task one if you have um, any experience designing websites. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Subscribe to this because I'm going to continuously update you on my classes and give you some tips and tricks and tell you what to expect. I'll talk to you all later.